Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a review of the Harlequin's Codex, the Codex from the Elder um, for Warhammer 40k, and this time I'm going to review the Harlequin's, just recently launched by Games Workshop. This was launched last weekend, and now I will do a fast review and I will review some of the rules with you that has appeared in this, in this new Codex. Uh, this is quite, in terms of units, they are quite, sm it's quite small codex, but we have, they have time to read all the fluff. We have a very nice pieces of art here, painting, and this, this is, have some, some of the drawings. I find them really incredible. So here you have one. It's a very nice piece of art. Another one. So I like a lot the codex, the painting work, the fluff. You see this all different. So you have we we'll go first. This is normally the whole the the classical structure of the of a mask from the Harlequins. So just some. You, some factions and how they are painted. If you want to follow some color schemes, here you have some. I, I think these schemes are great to as inspiration for your painting job, and then it's combined with nice piece of paint, nice paint work, um, ni nice artwork. So this is another one. Very hard looking. I think it's it's a great work. Here we have different um, colors for different um, masks or groups of Harlequins. Um, also, again, for inspiration. For, uh, here you can find the one that you want to follow. So, it's, it has some, some in, very interesting the weapons. Here, another one. I think the, the, the drawings on the, the are, are, are amazing. So, this is all, I will go fast here. Then we have the typical part where we have pictures of the miniatures. Um, most of them have been leaked in one way or another into the internet. And then we go to the rules, that is what I want to explain a little bit. So the first thing that we see is that the configuration is completely different from other armies. Uh, we have, we, the, it's mandatory to have Three troops, two fast attacks, and one heavy support, and we have seven elites as optional. Okay, so this is the 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 way to organize them, and we will see that they are not um, uh, headquarters. So this is going to be ma mainly the only way to organize them. And then we have the rule here, the the rules for this um, um, organization that is. If you select the troop master from this attachment as your warlord, you can reroll the result on, on the warlord traits. And then we have the crescendo at the start of the second turn. All the detachment that have fleet special rule can run and charge the same turn. So making the harlequins very, very fast. Normally you, you, it's very strange that you assault on the first turn. So the turn that you're going to assault is the second one. So it's a great thing. Then we go to the war gear. This is the, all the war gear from the Harlequins. We have the enigmas from the library. We have the crescendo, the Sehorach in rose, the mask of sacreds, Lothing God A, the Stanist Raymond, and the Story to Sword. And depending which ones, you see that there are a lot of um, notes here, side notes. So, for example, Crescendo is only for the troop masters and the shadow seers only. Then we have other ones that are for troop masters and solitaires. There are some that are only for shadow seers. So, depending on which one, can be selected by one um, character or another. So then we go to the to the only troops that we have in the codex. They are the troop. And the troop is costing 95 points for four players and one troop master. Uh, the troop master is quite a 
The abilities are quite good, so that uh, a normal troop has um, weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, a strength and toughness 3, and then weapon sk um, 1 wound is an initiative 6, 2 attacks and a leadership 9. And then the troop master have um, weapon skill 6, uh, ballistic skill 5, so it's like a character with 2 wounds and initiative 7. All the Harlequins are normally equipped with Hollow Suite, Shuriken Pistol, Combat, um, combat, um, close combat weapon, sorry, plasma grenades and flip belt. Hollow Suite gives the 5 plus in vulnerable safe. The flip belt is making them ignoring any terrain, and on top of that, they don't have any penalty to initiative when assaulting, so it's redundant with the grenades. They have all the Harlequins have Fear, Fleet, Furious Charge and Hit and Run, special rules. We'll see that this is repeating all the Harlequins. This is a unit that is mainly oriented to close combat, as we can imagine here. They have three attacks each gay and, and so two attacks base plus additional weapon, they have three attacks. And then the, the Troop Master and can have, will have four attacks. All can be equipped with Neuro Disruptor. is a, a pistol that have um, is a strength two, but it's a strength one and AP two, but have Flashbane, and then they all any troop can be equipped with Fusion Pistol. Also, any of the components can be equipped with the Harlequin and Brass, the Harlequin Keys, and the Harlequin Carries. So, if we go to the rules of each one. These are the close combat weapons, so the special close combat weapon of the Harlequins. We can make a look here. As all the um, all, all these codexes, we have the weapons and everything at the end. So the Harlequin Caris is a, each roll, each um, hit roll of six. Maybe this weapon special rule causes a single automatic wound, and uh, regardless of the tanners and have AP two, so it's like a rending. Then we have the Harlequin and Brass. Uh, the Harlequin uh, model with the keep with the Harlequin and has Hammer of Wraith, these three Hammer of Wraith attacks of strength 6, so quite powerful as well. We have the, the keys and uh, the Harlequin keys. Um, when a model equipped with this Harlequin keys makes in close combat attacks, one of the attacks will be a keys death attack roll. This attack separate. A keys death attack is always resolved as a strength 6 AP2 and is resolved 6 to wound is causing instant death. So it can be very, very deadly uh, if you are lucky. You will see that all the weapons from the Harlequins with 6s they do quite great stuff. So these are the three weapons that they can have. So you can add Hammer of Wrath, um, a strength 6, you can have a, uh, a rending weapon, or you can have uh, a weapon that have one attack of a strength 6 AP2 instant dead when 6 to 1. Okay, and then the true master can replace a close combat weapon by a power shot. I'm not sure if I will do that. The true master may take a highway grenades. I think this is a thing that you should take. Uh, although they have Furious Charge, and if you take some of these weapons that have a strength 6, they will have a strength 7 when assaulting in, with the Harlequin keys, so it's it's important, and I think here you can play a little bit with the combinations of the equipment, uh, and then can take one of the objects from the um, enigmas of the Black Library. So close combat, 95 for five, each 15 points for each. Uh, be careful, they are toughness three, and in vulnerable five is the safe. Uh, but we see that they have to be combined now with the next one. Well, the next one. Uh, I will go first to the Shadow Seer. So the Shadow Seer is a new uh, Psyker for the Harlequins. It's an elite choice. It's not a HQ. It's an elite choice. Uh, it's equipped again with the Hollow Suite, the Hallucination Grenade Launcher, uh, the Shuriken Pistol, the Mist um, Tape, that is this thing, the Flip Belt. And have Fear, Fleet, Furious Charge, Hit and Run, Independent Character and Cycle Level 2 can be increased to level uh, Cycle Level 1 and can be increased to level 2 and can replace uh, the Shuriken Pistol by a Neuro Disruptor that is and can have high work when I tank one equipment for the Enigma. The thing here is they have the he can take Phantasmancy, Phantasmancy the Monology, Santic or Telepathy. 
So it's a very defensive one, can then, um, I think it's combining very well with the abilities of the of the Harlequins, that is to be fast and to try to minimize the damage. I think it's it's mandatory to have some of them in your army if you're doing Harlequins. And if we go at the Phantasma Discipline, we see that the Bell of Tears is the first uh, power. The Bell of Tears is that a target that um, it's a blessing that targets the Shadow Seed and his unit while well, is in effect enemy uh, wishing to target the Shadow Seed and, and the, his unit must roll 2d6 plus 2 um, and then this is the, the unit range so it's like the all way to do so it's uh, like fighting combat but it's, it's a very short range so the average is 7 by, by 2 is 14 inches um, uh, so the average is going to be about 14 inches so you're going to minimize with this one you're going to minimize a lot the 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 firepower from the enemy we have then the dance of shadows it's a blessing that targets a single friendly unit and it's giving a steel and shrouded to this unit so very similar to the telepathy but instead of making a, 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 a areas effect or effect a, a six inches from the Shadow, uh, the shadow sphere in that case you target a unit and it's giving short rods and, and blessing and stealth then we have uh, a nova attack that is a strength 4 assault 2d6 conclusive so yeah you're going to be in close combat with that guy so i guess the nova is going to be used from time to time uh, we have a witch fire that is uh, a strength 3 assault 2 and 3d6 blind so this com again another thing that combines very well with the abilities you want to blind this is a thing that you want to do so you want to be able to be and uh, to blind the enemies to make the enemy more difficult to shoot you this combined with the bill of tears will make the the the, the arlequins more resilient we have the fog of dreams is a malediction and that you target a range a unit that is in range of 24 inches while the power is in effect, the target unit can only snapshots. Another thing that is to enhance to protect your Harlequins. Um, then we have a Witchfire power that is 24 inches. The target must take two separate leadership tests. Uh, the unit will suffer one wound for each point the first leadership test fail, and one for each the second leadership has passed. So, yeah, uh, you will create some wounds. It's like um, the sick is red. But you you <coughs> you take for fails and then for passing the leadership. It's quite this curious one, this one. And then I don't think two war charges thing is too much, but it's quite a curious one. And then we have and uh, the mirror of minds that is a um, focus which fire power, which is a range of twenty four inches. And then the shadow seal both roll a d six on the objective, and they um, and they are the perspective. If they um, have the same score or is winning the shadow seal, they make a wound, and then this operation is repeated until the unit is until the miniature is is killed, or the, the target is winning the far seal in in this role. So it's again just try to kill some some. You can kill a, a monstrous creature, or you can create a lot of damage to monstrous creature. Though most of them have normally leadership ten, but we have to see that the the Shadow Seed also have leadership 10. So quite interesting, I think this is, is almost mandatory if you do Arlequins. It's, it's the one that is going to give protection to all the troops and to all the units that you have. So you will need more than one to be able to spam some of the psychic powers. Then here we have the Death Jester. The Death Jester have weapon and ballistic skill 5 and then the, the typical, so the toughness 3, 2 wounds, uh, initiative 7 three attacks and leadership time, but the, the thing is that he has this um, variation of the shuriken cannon that is called the shuriker cannon the shuriker cannon have two modes uh, of shooting one is shooting like a shuriken cannon normally and then have another mode that you, you the, the I will show you here the stats I want again this is one of the things that I don't like from the new code is that you all, all go all the time up and so here is the Shrieker cannon have two different shooting modes. Um, can we sh uh, shoot as Shrieker or as a Shuriken? If you use a Shuriken, it's like a an Shuriken cannon. If you use it as a Shrieker, it's a solid one, be explosive, storm, P 
spinning position at 2 plus. So you wounds on 2 plus is AP5, with 6 you is AP2, and if you cause a wound, then the miniature is exploding, making a blast of a strength 5 AP4. And I think it's the removal more. So first, uh, So unit suffers a number of strength AP, strength five AP four is equal to the number of models from that unit that are under the marker. So you put the blast marker. Then let me see. Yeah, the small blast. So it's like it's a tricky one. I think most of the times you will use the normal shooting. But the big advantage of the jester is that when um, when you're shooting, if you cause a wound you give a minus two modifier and then you force the enemy to do a leadership test if they fail the leadership test he will choose in which direction this unit is is falling back so you can combine this to make the unit to fall back against your troops and then you put them in the range of assaulting you can do that to make fall back against the board and the edge of the battlefield and make the, the unit to disappear so it's for example a way to kill to eliminate a unit of marines if they are close to the side border you make them run to the border and then they will be lost. So it's it's a tricky one because yeah, three shots of a strength six AP five can be um, with Bellstorm can be go well or can do anything uh, nothing during the battlefield during the battle. Sixty points for this guy is not that bad. Um, and then we have the other the third elite choice is a solitaire. The solitaire is is like for me is the assassin of the elder. So the solitaire for me is the assassin of the elder at this point. It has um, ballistic skill, weapon skill 9, ballistic skill 9, strength 3, toughness 3, 3 wounds, initiative 10, um, 6 attacks and leadership 10. Um, as all the Arlequins, well, have the holo suite, have the, but will not use the holo suite because have uh, a invulnerable that is 3 plus, so I don't know why he has the holo suite. Has the Arlequin carriers, the Harlequin keys, the flip belt, and then can do deep strike, is eternal warrior, is fear, is fearless, is fleet, is furious charge, a hit and run, and precision strike. So it's an assassin. <clears throat> uh, for me, it's, it's, it has to accomplish the same role as, uh, as an imperial assassin. With all these roles, you can. It's almost like a m much better Kalidus because have eternal warrior and have much better abilities. So it has to be plus invulnerable. Um, cannot be joined by any character and he cannot join any unit because it's again like the, uh, they have to work in solitaire as the word say. It's always moving 12 inches, this is incredible, it's, moving, it's a minute that is moving 12 inches and once per turn he can um, decide to move 1d6 inches equal to the number of uh, to the turn we are. So for example if you are in turn 4 he can decide to move 4d6 inches instead of the 12. And on top of that the, the number of attacks will be increased to 10. So this is when you are going to assault, if you are in turn 4, uh, it's going to be a very good choice. Can take uh, high wear grenades and can take um, equipment from the enemies of the Black Library. Some of the equipment, not, them, not all of them. Then we have the Scape Weavers. So this guy is like, will work as an assassin from the Imperial. And then we have the Scape Weavers. Ski weavers are the jet bikes of the dark eye of the Harlequins. Um, the difference is that they have two wounds because there are two guys on the bike. They have toughness four as all. They have all sweet star bolas, mirage launchers, uh, ski weaver jet bike of course. They have fear, furious charge, and hit and run as you normal. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the the Sky Weaver Jet Bike have a Shuriken Cannon. We have the equipment here at the back, page 92. We go to page 92 for this one. So we'll have see here the Sky Weaver uh, has four plus armor says and had a Shuriken Cannon. Okay, and it's a jet bike from the as a um, Elder Jet Bike. Uh, it's quite expensive because each one is costing 50 points. So 100 for 2 is the basic, and then uh, you can increase up to 6 for 50 points per miniature. They can, the, the Star Bolas is a single attack of a small blast, strength 6 AP2, so it's quite strong. 
um, it's, a, it's a single one. I see this unit more as a shooting one, as a shooting unit, but if you want to um, make them um, assault unit, you have to change the star bolas for the, how it's called this, for the Zep Zigar Glaives, and the Zep Zigar Glaive, what is giving them is, um, it's it's quite a curious weapon, it's a weapon that has two profiles, it's plus one to strength, and AP2 when assaulting, and it's the strength of the user, are AP3 in the rest of the turn. So, uh, you can make the, I, I see more of them as a shooting unit without uh, doing any, in, without do, uh, do, uh, in adding any equipment, but you can make them uh, in assault and very dangerous if you add 10 points per miniature. The other option is to make them anti-tank, um, substituting the shuriken cannon by a high wear cannon, a strength 4, AP4 and, and high wear, um, but uh, it will cost 5 points per model, but I don't see them um, that efficient doing that. So well, you can scratch some cool points um, and then eliminate them assaulting and attacking to the back and to the rear armor. We have the Star Weaver, Star Weaver has two options, can be the transport of the troops or can be a fast attack. It's like a Venom, but instead of having, I, I, I think, have, well, it's a, yeah, it's a Venom, and, and the same profile as a Venom, but have capacity in transport 6 instead of 5, so you can put the troop plus a character. Um, the auto switch, auto field, sorry, is working like the, the flickering field, is 5 plus invulnerable safe. And the mirror launcher that I avoid, I, I um, forgot to mention before. This is a new equipment from the the Harlequins that you will find in all the in the vehicles and in the bikes. Once um, per turn, they can decide not to jink, and then they will have four plus invulnerable safe during this turn. So quite good if you want to focus on shooting. And the difference is instead of having two splinter cannons, is having two shuriken cannons. It's costing 70 points. A little bit more transport, and I think more versatile because the Shuriken cannon can target can target also vehicles. Uh, and then we have the Void Weaver, 75 points. These vehicles you have to be very careful. Two hull points and armor 10 all around, so it's like a, a Venom from the Dark Elder. So again, all of suites have the Highwear cannon and two Shuriken cannons, but the Thing, the strange thing here is one shooting cannon is pointing to the front and one shooting cannon is pointing to the back as you can see here. So what that means is these two have to shoot one, one enemy in the front and this one can shoot independently from the other two, there is the rule here, aft weapon, so this can shoot to a different target but has to shoot to the back. So this means that or you expose them a lot, putting them in the middle of the battlefield or normally you will only use two of the weapons, so the uh, rear um, shuriken cannon is, uh, will not be used a lot of most of the times. You can change the highwear cannon by a uh, by how it's called this um, by a prismatic cannon. The prismatic cannon is a, a small version of the prisma cannon from the elder. So we see here the prismatic cannon has three different profiles. Can be used dispersed. And it's a strength 3 AP4 large blast. Can be used focused, it's a strength 5 AP3 um, heavy and blast. Or can be used as a lance that is a strength 7 AP2 heavy and lance. So, yeah, not bad, but I will say that it's not good. So, yeah, the Harlequins, I think it's an army that have to use the technology. And that, that's all. So, these are all the units on this codex. And now we go to the different formations. So, a lot of equipment to do some uh, to do technology, try to play with the leadership. We'll see now when we go to the warlord traits that is, is enhancing a lot how to um, try to confuse the enemy, try to use the technology, try to, to steal the, the first turn, try to have additional turn and use the blind and use uh, the, the psychic powers to blind the enemy to protect your troops. So it's all about that. And, and have a very strong units on the soul that are the troops and very and strong shooting units but are very fragile. So they are alpha strike but at the same time very fragile. And then we go to the formations. The same form the first formation is Segorak Revenge. 
And this information form for all the units, three troops, three de um, death jesters, three shadow seers, one solitaire, two units of escape weavers, and one unit of void um, weavers. Uh, and they have the same rules as the, as the, how it's called this, as the detachment. So have um, the, the warlord, can the, the, the warlord, if it's a troop, can repeat when rolling the, the warlord trait and raising crescendo. It's that at, at the second, uh, on the second turn you will have, um, you can run and charge. Then we have the next one, is the Serpents, Broad, three troops, two units of escape weavers, and three units of, uh, three, uh, sorry, two units of escape weavers, three escape we uh, escape star weavers, and one void weaver. So, means that you have one of the shooting, um, vehicles, two, three transports, three troops, and then the, the bikes. And you will have a, a misery from the Thegorach. If you select this uh, troop master in, from this formation as your warlord, you can reroll as, as usual. And then we have the Sky Stride. A troop from this formation can use its hit and run special rule to embark upon an unoccupied Star Weaver from this formation. As long as the distance roll for hit and roll move. In inches is sufficient and allow models. So you can use the hit and run movement to embark in, in a vehicle. Well, I, I don't see exactly why you want to do that, but uh, well, it's a curious in role. Then we have the cast of players. This is formed by a troop, Death Jester, and a Shadow Seer. So it's like a troop, full, a full equip troop. Okay. And this is and the advantage that will give is Crusader. And any friendly unit from the Dark Elder or Elder will have a um, crusader at 6 inches from this unit. Then we have the Zegorak's chest, one troop, one escape weaver, and one, uh, one unit of escape weavers and one unit of boy weavers. So one unit of bikes, one unit of the shooting vehicle, and one troop. And they will have the racing crescendo, and that means that they can uh, um, run an assault after turn 2. We have the Heroes Path, so if you want to put the only the leads, you have a formation where you can deploy a Jester, a sh a f um, Shadow Seer, and the Solitaire. I think I will use this from time to time, playing with my Dark Elder. And what is giving this unit, uh, and these guys will have Infiltrate, it's Roll Rate and Stealth, so quite interesting. They will have almost always 2 plus cover safe. And the Solitaire Path, and then, but any of these, mo these models cannot join any unit. They have all, always to go alone. For this, it's not a big change. He's always working alone, so this is very good for him. This is very good for him. You will transform this as an... Uh, so you will create a, a unit of three assassins, most likely. So it's going to be similar to a, a better Kalidus. It's a combination between Kalidus and Eversol, indeed. This is going to be like having a, a Vindicare. And this is just having a, a Seeker that has... Uh, the assassin abilities. And then we have um, Faulu, Faul, Faulcus Blade, and this is the one that is formed by Sky Weavers and Void Weavers, so bikes and um, shooting vehicles, uh, and they will have wings of Faulku. If you decide to Jing with a unit of this formation, you can reroll Felic Cover Sage from that unit. So it's making the vehicles much more resilient. And that's all. So these are all the formations, and and then we can go to the last part that is to talk a little bit about the warlord traits and and wrap up about this codex. So in that codex we'll see that the, there are three warlord traits tables that is quite different from other codexes, and depending who what is the character that you take, you roll uh, differently. For example, if you take if your Warlord is a Death Jester or a Shadow Seer, you can either roll D6 on the Warlord traits in Warhammer 40k or D3 in these tables. If you take a Troop Master, you can either roll a D6 on the Warlord traits or D6 either in the Light to like and, and the Warlord traits. So, to, and the Troop P Master is the one that has um, access to some of the most fancy things here. So I guess at the end you will always end up having the troop as your warlord, uh, and and as is one of the mandatory units normally you will always have a troop. 
Um, here, here we have the table of the alliances. They are um, battle brothers with Dark Elder and Elder, and they have uh, um, allies of convenience with armies of the Imperium and Tau, desperate allies with orcs, and they are come apocalypse with chaos, demons, chaos, space marines, and Nekomen on the So, what we were expecting. So, what is the thing here? The three tables, the first three are the same. So, if you take a uh, uh, Dark Seer or Jester, or Death Chester, Shadow Seer or Death Chester, the, three, the first three are going to be the same. And the third three is the first one is reroll to hit rolls of one when shooting on close combat and all saving throws of a one. So, you reroll once, basically. Then you have the Fractal Storm, that the Warlord will have four plus invulnerable save. Okay, you improve a little bit your Warlord. Or the last one, that is your Warlord and his unit can add uh, one inch to the distance that they can move whenever they move. So you will get one inch when running, one inch when moving, one inch when assaulting. So it's making the unit much more mobile. This can be interesting. Then, the, if you take uh, a, a Shadow Seer or a, a Death Jester, you only can draw a D3 in one of these tables, but the three tables are the same from the, third, the first three, and you will have one of these. And you cannot re-roll with these guys. If you take a Troupe Master, you roll a d6 on all the tables and you can re-roll, or you roll a d6 on the Warhammer tables and you can re-roll as well. So what we have then uh, after the number three. So if we take, um, we decide to go for the Light Warlord Twitch table, I think it's one of the strongest Warlord tables that I have seen. The first one is, you can add four to any roll to seize initiative. So meaning that unless you have you roll a one, you seize initiative. So you almost guaranteed. So what that means, if you have this ability, you will decide to deploy second. You see how the enemy deploys, and then you roll a d6, and on two plus, you, you seize initiative. So very, very, very in the strong ability, this one. Wetway Walker. Before deployment, select at least three units in your Warlord Detachment. Each unit has one of the following special rules. Deep Strike, Infiltrate, or Scout. Each unit may select different special rules. So also a very interesting one, because you, 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 will, have, you will increase even more the mobility and the technology of your army. Last one, a trick of the light. Immediately after all forces have deployed and all scout deployments have been made, you may remove this warlord and or up to these three other friendly units with the Harlequin's faction within the 12 inches of the warlord from the table. Each unit that is removed in this way can either be immediately deployed, again using the normal deployment, rules or place in reserve. So imagine that you decide to go first. You put these units next to your warlord. And then once this, uh, when everything is deployed, you decide to roll and you re redeploy these three units and then you can redeploy, take into account how the enemy deploys. So you can have the advantage of, um, well, you will need to deploy first, you will have the first turn, but on top of that, you will be able to redeploy and then minimize the effect of um, deploying first. Also the same for the web portal, if you can keep units in reserve or in, yeah, to deep strike old flank. Then we have the Warlord traits of the Twilight. Um, the first one is, if the mission uses a variable game length, you can, you may add two or subtract two from the roll uh, for the district. So it's, it's time when you start uh, throwing to see if the battle is finishing, you can ro you roll a d6 and you can decide to add or subtract 2. So if you are losing, you will add 2 to avoid that the battle is finishing. If you are winning, you will subtract to force that the battle is finishing. So this can be uh, quite useful. I don't think it's as powerful. Uh, it can be also quite powerful. Uh, I don't know how many battles you, you lose or you just tie because the, it keeps continuing and you were winning and then you are, you are not losing or the other way around. Steps of the Mortal Transition Any to wound roll of a 6 inflicted by your Warlord in close combat or to wound roll of a 5 plus make with a Kiss of Death attack has the instant death special rule. 
So you give, um, it's not bad. Uh, if it's your to pay, it's going to be your to pay is going to be a close combat guy. So yeah, it's it's quite um, com combines quite well with the to pay master. And then we have the dance of infinite mirrors. Once per game, your warlord and his unit can make a mirror leap instead of moving in the movement phase. A unit making a mirror leap move up to 24 inches when moving in this manner. Your warlord and his unit cannot can move over all other models and terrain and if they were on open ground uh, uh, like if they were on open ground but they cannot and they move on top of so it's like a, a teleporting 24 inches a unit cannot charge in the same time and turn that it makes this mirror leap so it's like a redeploying 24 inches this is going to be used at the beginning of the battle and it's again but I think it's all um, very well with the fluff, so it's a way to, try to confuse your enemy, try to uh, show that you, you go for one way and then so all of a sudden you move 24 inches and you are on the opposite side of, of the front. So I think the Warlord traits are very well um, um, defining how the Arlequins work. And then we have on the last one the Dark Warlord traits table. We have enemy units in base contact with your Warlord or his unit must roll an additional d6 when doing fear and morale checks so very interesting I think uh, but uh, you only want to go there if you're fighting against enemy that is susceptible to to fear or to lose morale I will not use for example this if you are playing against marines remember that you can re-roll in, in with, um, if you take the basic detachment from, from the harlequins then we have the twisted in, in core at the end of the game, before determining the winner of the battle, you may move your warlord and his unit once as if were at the movement phase, then either run or shoot if they were a shooting phase, and then if you wish, charge and fight a single run of close combat battle as if it were a soul phase. Your opponent can fire overwatch and fight back as normal. If your warlord is locked in close combat, at the end of the game, he and his unit can only choose to fight one additional round of close combat. If embarked on a transport, the warlord unit might disembark, but the transport cannot move or shoot. After your warlord and his unit have performed these extra actions, the game ends. So you gain an extra turn from your warlord. It's a very, uh, it's very situational but can give you some additional points or can give you some advantage at the end of the battle so it's it's very situational and only if the battle is very tight can give you the victory by, by having this warlord trait again another one uh, very linked with the technology of the harlequins from my point of view and the final uh, the one is the final joke if your warlock is removed as a casualty while fighting a, a challenge both players roll off immediately if you win or the result is a draw, your warlord opponent is also removed as a casualty. Yeah, here this is very situational and I think your enemy will never accept a challenge unless they, uh, they don't have any option. For example, imagine that you are fighting against a, a character that is alone, then he cannot reject the, the challenge. But anyway, yeah, you assault with your troop, troop master, you throw the challenge if he refuses, you take this guy out of the combat. So it's a way to neutralize uh, the enemy warlord because you can start uh, asking for challenge each turn and then this guy, um, unless there is another character that you can kill very easily because remember this, this the Trooper Master is a beast in close combat. Um, so you can, you can neutralize very easily the warlord of the enemy. I don't know what, yeah. This is, uh, and then finally, uh, well, here is we, we cover almost all these things. Uh, uh, finally, uh, as usual, we have the tactical objectives. I know we'll not go through them, but as usual, from one to six, you substitute the tactical objectives. So, how I see this Dark Elder Codex, I see that it's not, uh, there are not units that are super, super, super good, or there are units that are overpowered. I think they are very strong, they are quite scary in close combat, but at the same time 
you have to um, synergize very well the army. If not, you're going to lose your elder very fast. They are expensive and they are they are quite weak in terms of resilience. So they are um, good. Uh, they hit very hard, but they don't receive the hits um, very well. Okay, so. And here you have to use all the all the technology, all the psychic powers that you can, uh, all the different abilities to try to confuse the enemy, to try to redeploy your units, to try to. I think this guy is going to be more important than it looks like. Try to make uh, move the, the enemy units and put them out of position. Imagine that you make run uh, a broadside, you make them move out of the cover or you make them advance to you in order that they are going to be closer to you close combat. So the other thing is that you will depend a lot on sixes. So you, you will depend a lot on throwing sixes to have the nice things on your weapons. And the shuriken pistol, you need six to uh, strength six AP2. The kiss um, is one attack that is causing instant death with uh, sixes. And all, all the things is if you throw a six, you do something special, special, some nice things. So you will be depending on the six. So summarizing, um, expensive and elite units, specializing close combat and short range or mid range shooting. There is not nothing that is have a huge range. If we look, the table will see that everything is 24 inches or less. So uh, a short range. Um, army that strikes, uh, hits very hard, but have um, very little resilience and will depend a lot on the technology, uh, on the abilities, and how you can confuse your enemy to succeed on the battlefield. I like a lot the, the this codex. I think I will complement my Dark Elder with Harlequins. I have some metal miniatures, very old, that I will paint in during this year. I have. Also, I have I bought the solitaire. I have a farseer, so I will start doing a small force of harlequins that I will combine with my dark elder army. It's going to be very difficult. The other thing is, it's going to be very difficult to have them as allies. Or you take a formation, and then you you don't take, or you take them as a main and detachment, and then you ally the dark elders to them, because there is not HQ, so you cannot take them as allies. So the only way to take them is with this. Detachment, but this is not a, a light detachment. You have to take this as a main detachment, and then, and if you want to use the technology, you need to have the the warlord in in the Arlequins to be able to have the warlord traits. That I think is the best the best complement to this codex. So that's all. Please leave your opinion below. I'm very interesting to know if you have read this codex. What do you think? If you like the and the Harlequins, and if you will combine them in your armies. Uh, like if you like it, subscribe if you find this interesting and you want to see more in future, more reviews, uh, more um, hobby tutorials, more things. And thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye!